everyone. Welcome back to The First Draft. I'm your host, Nina Banks, and I'm joined with... Kayla Holmes. Ola Maktai. Hope Smith. And welcome back to our second episode. We had a little delay with um, the snow that happened, and then last week's issue was very hectic, and so we haven't been back, be able to be back in the studio, but now we are. How was everyone's past two weeks? So good. I'm like, <laughs> first of all, that freeze sucked. Oh my god, mm-hmm. I could go anywhere, but you know, it's it was a little Texas reset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, I was about to say. I think it was a nice reset. We got to stay at home. I mean, I still had to do like work from home, but it mm-hmm. was it was nice. I mean, I'm introverted. I have the <laughs> time of my life. I was just reading books, and I'm like, oh, it's snowing. This is wonderful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, I, I work at CVS, and I had to work on Tuesday, like, when schools were canceled, and so many people came into my work and were like, don't work too hard. And I was like, I'm here. What do you mean? <laughs> You're like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I didn't plan I on it. Plan on it. <laughs> <laughs> you just clock out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But a lot of crazy stuff has go- been going on in, like, pop culture, of course with Kanye, but um, a lot of trends in femininity and, like, just, I guess, it's hard being a woman right now, <laughs> in yeah. general. Just uh-huh. seeing all the things swirl around. Um, Roe v. Wade's anniversary happened last month, mm. and we're still fighting for it, and people just still don't like women and i think that's pretty interesting uh-huh. <laughs> after all this time too you'd think like without with, with so much you know talk about it there would be a little like hey maybe let's not you know mm-hmm. but it just keeps happening and honestly i think from time to time we gotta hop on a podcast and start talking <laughs> because it's, Absol- it just keeps being a problem we're the antithesis to andrew <laughs> tate we're the antithesis yeah. <laughs> 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 Big words. <laughs> I keep on thinking. I'm like, okay. I don't know. <laughs> it's so weird because, like, when you think about history, you're like, oh, World War One, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you you think about COVID, and you're like, well, I'm living in it right now. Mm-hmm. And people will ask about it whenever I'm older. So it's like, am I? I'm, I'm scared, yeah. and I did not expect this to happen. So it's little scary right well what i think it, what's interesting about um femininity is like people are constantly having conversations about what is femininity i feel like everyone's just trying to define it for everyone mm-hmm. when i feel like that's something that's very personal to you um mm-hmm. i don't really think you can let anyone else define what being a woman is mm-hmm. right like that's completely up to you mm-hmm. yeah at this point whenever i see like people like debating like oh, you can't even, like, give me the definition of what a man is or a woman? I'm like, but, like, it's not, like, necessary. Like, we don't really need to know. That's not, like, Mm -hmm. if you want to be a woman, just be a woman. Yeah. That's cool. Everyone likes pink. It's cute. Yeah. Why are we we gatekeeping it? (laughs) It just, it comes down to, like, you shouldn't tell people what this thing has to be. Mm -hmm. You know, femininity... It has so many layers. So to sit there and be like, well, no, because <laughs> women like ruffles, you know, or like, <laughs> no, woman does this. It's, God damn it, just, <laughs> just <laughs> for God's sake, if someone wants to like, you know, do something that's called feminine, what the hell? Just do it, yeah. you know? Right, and I feel like no one should invalidate what that experience looks like. Just right. because like there are some people who maybe don't take some sort of stereotypical approach to their femininity and they're mm-hmm. like they're seen as I don't know what your experience was like when you guys were younger but like being a tomboy and mm-hmm. like I just feel like there was a lot of maybe negative talk right. surrounding those conversations of like mm-hmm. how a girl should be yeah right I think there's a lot of defensiveness about it too because I feel like a lot of us grew up feeling like being a woman and being feminine was like a a shame, you know, like if you're too much of one thing, it's just wrong. So especially that like tomboy thing growing up, you know, especially when you're friends with guys and everything as a kid, it's being raised in that environment where you feel like you had to hide this for so long and now coming out of it, I get that like protectiveness around it, you know? Yeah, it's just weird because mm-hmm. like I remember growing up, I really liked math. I just liked solving stuff for some reason, and it was always, oh, but like you should probably go into like design, not like 
not like engineering or architecture, and I'm like, their numbers. Why are you assigning it to this? Yeah. <laughs> like it's literally. I like. I like especially the ones where you have to equate one equation to the other, mm-hmm. and it was like, oh, maybe you should go and draw like a flower. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, it's very odd, especially looking back on childhood, because I remember not liking the color pink, and it's my favorite color now, and I know that a lot of it is just, like, internalized misogyny. Like, I didn't want to be associated with liking things that were too girly, so I'd be, like, perceived as, like, weak or something. But now I feel like I'm able to embrace it more, and it's not, like, super daunting to me, or but just, like, things in general, like... Um, picking up, like, more masculine hobbies, like playing tag or something on the playground. It was like, oh, yeah, the boys will like me if I act more masculine. Um, which, which what does is that say about men? <laughs> 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 uh, but, yeah, it's kind of odd to see how, like, we've gone around in circles. But also, on the flip side with masculinity, I feel like to a degree... At least in America, a lot of women are more able to express their masculine sides without scrutiny, whereas men, like, it's insane. I, like, I, uh, Michael B. Jordan, like, hosted SNL, um, a few weeks ago, and he wore, like, a purple suit, Mm -hmm. diamond chain. I saw it, didn't think much of it, and then I had, like, a YouTube short real thing about it and it was like one of those ones that had like two likes and I looked at the comments and it was like why is he wearing something so feminine and I was like he's wearing a purple and like a diamond chain like it's (laughs) I I was I was like I like that was not even the first thing that popped in my head I was like Mm -hmm. oh what a cool outfit and now seeing like a lot of you know men embrace like more like feminine air quotes silhouettes like Timothy Chalamet with like his backless top i think at can the film festival Mm -hmm. it's it's nice to see that it's going both ways yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. i just remember like my senior year actually in newspaper just like a lot of the girls that i had that class with really liked harry styles Mm -hmm. um i've never been like i'm not a really big harry styles fan but like i definitely (laughs) (laughs) i definitely really appreciated um how authentic he was in the media Mm -hmm. just with his different like fashion shoots and wearing skirts and i just remember that was kind of a topic of conversation in our class for a little bit yeah Yeah. i don't know i've thought about what can define femininity because that's such a hard thing to define you know and there's Mm -hmm. there's so much culture around that you know between like man and woman i don't i don't know how you would you know because you could look at makeup or something you know and go well makeup has plenty of utility that doesn't make it a feminine thing but it's so assigned to women you know and i think that is that might also be part marketing um i don't know i don't know why people have to be so afraid of it though especially like you would mention guys just dressing you know yeah. i don't know why it was such a big deal when guys started painting their nails oh, let yeah, the men oh, yeah. have colorful nails <laughs> let, i don't know i think it's fun but there are people in this world who, like, flip over that, you yeah, know? I see, like, I'm thinking back to, I remember this one time in kindergarten, like, two boys were, like, holding hands. And they were friends. I mean, it's kindergarten, everyone. Yeah, I did that with Yeah, kindergarten. like, and also, I heard this, <laughs> I heard this, <laughs> like, I, I, I just think, it, like, every little kid is just, like, you just hold hands with your friends, it's whatever. And my teacher was like, no, you can't do that. And... Because, but I'm like, if I held hands with my girl best friend, mm-hmm. it'd be whatever. But like, it's femi- it's feminine, and thus, it's gay, right. which is wrong. And so, it's like we have com- connotated femininity with both being like weak mm-hmm. and being gay, which is obviously not wrong. But it's such a. There are just so many things that are uh, associated with it that we just can't get a break. <laughs> Like, I know. We can't get a break. Mm-hmm. I think it boils down to, like, some people just kind of just don't care and do whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to paint my nails today, even though I'm a guy. Like, some people, 
it affects them at home too and so they're like i'm just gonna go the traditional route yeah. and that's fine too if you're mm-hmm. like trying to like protect yourself from your parents screwing you but like it just gets so annoying like being told what to do yeah every two seconds right. it's like it's not enough that the government is trying to tell me what to do with my own body like you, you do mm-hmm. like like come on now yeah like mm-hmm. it doesn't even with the michael b jordan thing it doesn't how does this affect your life again exactly it's right he ate in purple <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> you couldn't do it nobody yeah. no i'm sorry you couldn't pull it off you yeah. couldn't like, pull it off that's my, what you're mad about <laughs> you're mad mm-hmm. <laughs> like too bad yeah. Uh, no, I remember there there comes like this, I think, hierarchy issue. And I remember in third grade, I was just like with a table of girls, you know, and for some reason it was, it was middle of class BT dub. I don't know what what we were doing, but like we were like, we have to. <laughs> sit up straight which is so let me explain this is so <laughs> odd that like we all told each other what we had to sit up straight. It didn't make sense to me because, like, why, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, we were little girls sitting in class, and we were like, (laughs) your back is slouching, you have to sit up straight, which is so, which is so weird, you know? But we came from a very small town in Nevada, and the values are very different, you know? (laughs) And I think that kind of goes into, like, looking at yourself from the outside and, you know, especially as a woman, viewing yourself instead of just being in yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, just being the person that you are. Just existing. Yeah, I think that young girls are definitely trained more to think about how they're perceived. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know for me, a lot of that was being told to be Mm ladylike, which I never... Yeah. (laughs) I always thought that was really (laughs) stupid. Yeah. Because, like, what was comfortable for me, just being around my family or, like, my close friends was... I guess not having like my legs crossed, Mm -hmm. sitting with them more, I guess, like man spreading in a way, having them more far apart, kind of slouching, kind of hunched over. Mm -hmm. And I can remember my mom being like, like, that's not ladylike. And, you know, it's not like I was wearing a dress or a skirt. I mean, I'd be in pants, but like it was just seen as unacceptable. Um, And I never really heard that from any anyone else, but it was still just interesting because I think that society teaches young girls to be very aware of how they present themselves whereas younger boys are given this pass of like well boys will just be boys right. um, and you see that I mean across ac- across everything Every- no, yeah yeah especially being black I think that the masculinity is you are immediately associated with being masculine as a girl and so any act of femininity is almost too much like being told like if you straighten your hair that's too grown like and my oh yeah parents were like mm, or my dad who's black he was like um like maybe too much or like painting your nails or you know mm-hmm. like it's like i'm just yeah. I'm trying to switch up the look. Like, right. Right. Like, well, yeah, you guys have like the red nail phenomenon, where like you could not paint your nails red, or is that just like a me thing? I okay, mm-hmm. so I didn't personally experience that, but I did have friends who like their parents. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna use the word weird, but like for me, it was it was weird to hear of those mm-hmm. rules because I just I didn't have that experience myself, and I didn't really, at least at that age, understand I guess the connotation of of red. Right. Um. But yeah, I knew girls who like couldn't paint their nails red also i feel like young girls have this or i shouldn't generalize but i know my friends in like fifth sixth grade had this obsession with with womanhood Mm -hmm. and of like the idea of being grown in puberty Mm -hmm. and so like i mean i had friends who were shaving their legs at like 10 and it's not like and the sad (laughs) thing is like it wasn't coming from them you know it wasn't coming from like this place of I just want to do this because it seems cool or it seems new to me and I want to try it. It was actually more from a place of like, I'm starting to grow hair and the women around me are teaching me that that's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And so to kind of get this card, like this womanhood card, I have to start shaving my legs too. And there was no, I don't think we had a whole lot of role models around us who were like having us really sit back and question whether or not that's something we wanted to do or question why it is 
we wanted to do it in the first place. Yeah. Especially just like comments on your body like that were just so off base like um I don't know I I think um I started getting like hitting puberty like pretty late like all my friends had had growth spurts like fourth fifth grade and so I got mine in like seventh like around middle school to early high school and that's when and then like I suddenly like got boobs like junior year (laughs) and like it was such a shock It was very odd to see how people perceive me differently being like flat chested and I guess more childish or like boyish. Mm -hmm. And then like having like, this feels gross, the body (laughs) of a woman, but it was like now people like can look at me like as an object of like, I don't even want to say object, that sounds gross, but like that is what you're seen as like an object that you are able to like, give affection or something and it's like what nothing really changed it's Mm -hmm. just you know it was really weird I remember this one time I I was a senior in high school and like I finally started like my body was like you know what now you can (laughs) (laughs) and I'm like oh okay and it didn't even come from people outside it came from my family and I'm Mm -hmm. like you, you know me. Yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing? What are you, <laughs> like, I'm the doing? same person. Um, but, yeah, they just kind of started treating me very, it was it was just very weird. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like, oh, you're a woman? I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I no think it's, was. it's different, too, um, as a black woman, because then you start to realize how sexualized black young girls are. And so mm-hmm. there's this weird space of, like, well, because you're a black woman, you're supposed to be, like, you're supposed to have a certain body type. But then it's, like, if you were to have that body type, mm-hmm. then from, like, another group of people, it's seen as as gross. Um, yeah. It's seen as not the, the stereotypical beauty standard. And it's such a weird space to navigate. Because not only are you navigating femininity just as a woman, but you're navigating that as a black woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have had comments this is actually like it's fine now but I remember as a freshman a junior he was talking to me and um he was saying oh so you're black and Asian right so um he was referring to you know a genital part of me and he was like oh so like what race is it and if it was black then it was undesirable and if it was Asian, it was better. And he was also a black man. And it is um, also very odd that we face such scrutiny within our community. We're all the, we're literally all black. Like, why would you say that? Also, I was 14. That's oh, like yeah, that crazy. Is, I'm so sorry that happened. Oh my God. That is no, baffling. I know, but I'm like thinking about it now, like, oh, whatever. But I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, if that happened to my child, I'm like, I oh don't boys, know. what uh, 17-year-old. I know, like, right. why? what gives you, like, the audacity to, like, say <laughs> something? The audacity your age to I know. this, like, 14-year-old? What confidence, like. Illegal. I, no, I barely talk to, like, like, talking to, like, underclassmen about, like, more than, like, their grades or stuff is uncomfortable. Like, why do you feel <laughs> like... But boys will be boys, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Men, yeah. Think yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like so much can just be said, you know? Mm-hmm. I feel like guys get away with so much, and Kanye West <laughs> can just say things, but it's okay because he made graduation. First of all, I don't even <laughs> like graduation. Sorry, sorry. <gasps> I'm oh, sorry. Oh, you're going a little too far. <laughs> sorry. But some just outrageous things, but, like, uh, it's just Kanye, you know? Mm -hmm. And, yeah, we can chalk it up to that because, yeah, it is Kanye. And, you know, Kanye, he has a history. But imagine if, what's her name? Kim Kardashian or the other Kardashian that he married. Mm -hmm. Imagine if she said something like that. Do you know the onslaught of, like, hate that would happen, that would occur? Yeah. I don't know. The hate towards women is so disproportionate. And it's, like, baffling. Like, Lizzo. Literally just existing. People are like, 
oh, she's so fat. Like, why does she even make music? Like, I don't want to see that. And it's like, Nobody, she's getting her bag. Right. <laughs> I am so sorry. Nobody is putting, like, something into your head like, and being like, you must do this or else. Right. No yeah, one like, is. No one's doing that, so mm, it's insane. And then um, I saw this recently. Penn Badgley of you, he recently um, was talking about how like he was uncomfortable with doing like um, sex scenes and like the his shows, and how he just didn't feel like you know that was good for his marriage and fidelity and for Slay. And then I saw a comment under the interview talking about like, well that. Obviously, that's great, like, that he voiced that he was um, uncomfortable with that and that he was in an environment where that was able to change. Mm -hmm. But then they're like, well, for women, you know, like, a part of, you know, sex scenes are a big draw. And that's, like, that's probably not something that would be able to happen as easily or, like, the romantic aspect. Like, that would probably... That prob that concern probably wouldn't have been listened to. And if it was, it probably would have been met with scrutiny like oh why don't you just get over it like it's just a part of the show rather than like oh wow you're being a good husband like mm -hmm. thank you for you know it's it's really annoying to see yeah it's like oh okay if i had if i looked differently then you would just let it be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was it was interesting growing up because um i went to middle school overseas and let's just say i was taller than most <laughs> can, you, can you imagine a, a 13 year old that's like five seven yeah it was bad and I I don't think they even saw me as a girl because whenever I was like oh hey I like this boy they're like what do you what do you mean I'm like what, you, oh. what? I mean I like this I like this boy and they're like they don't no, oh, yeah. you're not a girl. What do you mean? And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I asked, and I'm like, what do you mean by that? They're like, well, you're just, you're just that tall girl. And I'm like, okay, thank you yeah. so much for that experience. I needed that, and it was just interesting to see because if someone was a little, if I was a little shorter, or if I, because I'm, like, I was super skinny too. So if I was, if I had more weight on me, I would be perceived differently. And it was just like, that was my first experience with that kind of, mm -hmm. what do people call it? I don't want to say misogyny, but it was kind of misogyny because it was just like, if you don't look a certain way, it's kind of weird for you to think of yourself in a romantic sense. Oh and yeah. I'm like... But yeah, like as in a desirable way. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Well, I think that even opens the conversation up to like how desirability is different for both women and men. Mm -hmm. I think kind of going back to the whole boys will be boys conversation from a young age, boys are not only, I guess, allowed to talk about how their bodies are changing, but they're almost encouraged. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're encouraged to experience certain things. Um, whereas for women, it's it's a little more negative for so you true. to oh, yeah. go through puberty and for you to be interested in boys. Right. I mean, when boys start dating, a lot of the times the conversation for them is just about like how they should, I don't know, open doors or, you know, like how they should talk to girls. What's the best way to talk to girls? Whereas for girls, it's this. It's trying to like steer the conversation away from this idea of dating, and it's more so a topic of like focus on something else, um, which is great. I just I wish that women were encouraged to explore relationships and sexuality in the way that men are not only allowed to but encouraged to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Also with dating, it's also alarming that like you will see like boys come to their father like, oh, that girl like that I asked out, she turned me down, and the father's like go back like ask her again and embarrass her in front of your whole class if she doesn't like i saw like something like that and i'm like that is effing terrifying mm -hmm. like why would you create this narrative in your son's head that hey there are more fish in the sea it's okay it doesn't mean that you're a bad person or that um you're you know undesirable just wait for the next girl no, you have to ridicule a girl and put this narrative in her head that, oh, you should be able, any guy that asks you out,
go with him. Well, yeah, because yeah. then it develops a sense of entitlement in the boy. Like, yeah. you deserve this girl, and you deserve her approval. Right. And then that also starts to create this narrative for the girl of, like, I should, I should just say okay. Like, mm-hmm. this person deserves my time, my energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some um, women, I know some women are just like, I'll say okay, just for safety reasons. Let yeah. me not. Yeah, like, oh, do you have? No, like the other um, month, some random guy came up to me on the street and I was like in Fort Worth. I was trying to find where the parking garage was to go back to my car. It was broad daylight. I was fine. And this guy comes up to me and he starts a conversation with me and he's talking for like 10 minutes. And then at the end, he asked me for my number and I have a boyfriend and I literally just said yes. It wasn't like romantic, but I was like, yeah, you can give your number to me never texted him because that was like a thing of safety i was like i don't i'm alone right now there aren't that many people on the street if i don't give you my number i don't know what's gonna happen to me Mm -hmm. like that is and i like will hear like my coworker, and he's like 22 and he talks about like how fun dating is and then like for a girl Worst case scenario on a date, you get assaulted or wow. die. Like, it's not just, like, a fun, like, little activity. Like, you have to be so hyper vigilant at all times. Like, it seems, it's not even, like, fun. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, like, stressful. Like, yeah. I, I can't imagine, like, going in these situations. Like, yeah, share your location with your friend. Um, tell them where you're at. Go to the bathroom. Text them an update. Oh, I got to my home safe. Lock, you know, like, it's mm-hmm. just... I'm so tired of worrying about my own safety against other people, mm-hmm. you know? And I'm... <laughs> I hate that I have to sit there and worry about my friends and hope that the people that they're seeing are good people and that they're not going to get hurt, you know, just anywhere going out. It's yeah. it's sad. And the more you think about it, it's like, damn, you know? Mm-hmm. Like... Can I have anything nice? Can I can I live, please? Right. Yeah. I remember I saw this video on TikTok where it, she was a um, self defense instructor, and she was talking about ways that you can like, you know, you can just like um, avoid being abducted or harassed or whatever. And there, and then she was like, um, if you have long hair, put it up in a bun or do something and I'm like I wear a hijab what if someone's just like yeah. and like drags me in and I'm like wow I actually have to I have to think about this mm-hmm. and just like in your scenario you know like the girl is always like sharing her location telling her friends like giving them updates and be like hey I'm home I'm safe the guy is probably just like oh I'm gonna go take out this really hot chick <laughs> and then goes home and the friends aren't asking about his safety they're asking oh do you like her mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. like, it's so different, and it's, whenever I'm trying to, like, discuss this with my guy friends, and they're, like, well, I don't get it. I'm, like, well, yeah, you won't get it, because you're not, <laughs> you yeah. know, you're not going to get it, but you have to listen anyways, because, unfortunately, men tend to listen to other men. They don't, mm-hmm. they don't really listen to women. So. And then once they have their daughters, they're not equipped to right. handle these situations, and it's, like, yeah, my dad put me in karate and um, for five years. And then, um, true warning, uh, he, the my karate teacher, uh, he assaulted two of the girls in our dojo. And it's like the very thing you were protecting me from happened. Like, it's not like you're never safe. It's like, I, I know. It's like I knew these girls. It could have been me. Like, mm-hmm. it's insane like he put me in it with the sole reason of me being able to defend myself and mind you these girls they were black belts like it wasn't a matter of like oh could they protect themselves Mm -hmm. it is a matter of this man that they trusted did something awful to them and it's always someone it's usually someone that you know Mm -hmm. like and that's such a difficult thing to grapple with you know like wow it's probably someone that I know that yeah. might happen to me. That is so sick. Mm-hmm. It's like, I remember I was talking about history earlier, and it's like, oh, yeah, it happened in the past, like, you know, pre-pandemic. We were all like, yeah, 
there were pandemics in the past and then it actually happened. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think it would, like the assault thing, I didn't think it would happen to me because it would just, it, I, it didn't happen to me, Mm -hmm. you know? And I was just like, yeah, it's, I'm whatever. I'm, I'm cool. I'm safe. You know, I always go and come back usually in the morning. It's whatever. Um, but another trigger warning, y'all. It happened It happened to me, too. And I'm like, what? And it was from someone I knew. And I'm like, okay. So the statistics are right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what am I going to tell my daughter? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What am I going to tell her? Like, it's like, oh, so because you look a certain way and you have certain body parts, this may or may not happen. Um, I'm going to put you in things that are going to protect yourself like your dad did Mm -hmm. but it's still it may still happen Mm -hmm. it's like Mm -hmm. okay this is such it's not a very kumbaya world I mean we all now know that but it's kind of depressing to live in at the same time so Mm -hmm. it's like I know I, I have a reality check on myself but it's still depressing that I still have to do that even though it's like 10 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. But I'm in a parking garage. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to look left and right every two seconds. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah. Okay. It really, it also brings the conversation that a lot of men have such a strong dislike for when women say kill all men or <laughs> I hate all men. And it's so infuriating when they take these generalizations that if it doesn't apply to you, it doesn't apply mm-hmm. to you. Why do you think it applies to you? Like, it's well, it's a generalization because why men have committed awful acts of violence against men mm-hmm. or women disproportionately at very high rates. So when we say kill all men or God, I just hate all men. Not actually, <laughs> like, like no, I mean it. <laughs> get rid of them all. All of them. <laughs> get rid of them. Yes. Yeah. Or like oh. every rebuttal a man will have, like, um, like, uh, like why would you like talk about a guy's body? Like, That's what have we that. been doing wow. for centuries, <laughs> commenting on women's bodies? And now that we have turned the tables, I'm not saying every case is justified. Sure, there, misandry exists. Is it bad? Yes, oh, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Uh, That's rare. <laughs> Giggle. <laughs> um, but you Don't know, <laughs> but it's like now that we have like flipped the tables or tried to address these things that women are literally doing for basic protection or reclaiming back their womanhood. Now it's a problem. <laughs> Now it's an issue. Now okay. it's an issue in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, so now it affects you, and now you care. Mm-hmm. That is so interesting. Yeah. It's like they don't, not all, of course, not all, but it's like some don't care unless it applies to them, and they're like, oh, whatever, it happens, it's bad. Yeah. But are you talking to your friends about it? Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't, you don't have to like be serious 24-7, but... It is important to discuss, especially right. if you're, like, if you have a new friend and you're trying to, like, oh, I like this person, but I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. It's it's a good conversation. S- well, not a good conversation starter, but, like, <laughs> just, 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 just to meet you. Yeah. How do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> just sneak it in. Just yeah. like, so, by the way, did you hear about the news or something? Um, it's just, it it's so important to have men in the discussion because they're like they need to hear it too. Oh yeah, right. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not just oh my mom or oh my sister. It's everyone, even right. if they're not related to you. They yeah. still matter. Because so. what happens when it's one of your friends? You know, like as a guy, what happens then? I think that conversation really needs to be had. Mm-hmm. You know, it's definitely such an important conversation that a lot of men, for whatever reason, aren't willing to have. Whether they, I guess they feel guilt owning up to it, or I really don't, I can't like fathom a reason for not wanting to listen to mm-hmm. something that could help one of your peers or a family member. But um, I don't know. At this point, I feel like we've passed the point of guilt 
in several conversations, whether it's race, gender, you know, whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I think we really need to dismantle that. And height, stop. (laughs) It doesn't matter how tall you are. (laughs) I am so sick of hearing men disparage themselves. Like, I'm just a short, I'm so short. Like, no girl is ever going to like me. That is... Do you know how many men I've liked? I'm 5'8". Do you know how many men that are shorter than me? Right. Like, I don't like, care. I don't <laughs> care how big, little yes. you are. <laughs> and also, let's think about, let's take it back. Mm-hmm. Why do women desire a man that's taller than them? Maybe it's because the patriarchy have Im- implanted an idea that women are supposed to be protected and you know well, what not they can't by, protect themselves yeah by their um loved one so mm-hmm. a man bigger than them can do so and i'm not saying that's the case you know praise all the short <laughs> men out there i love all the short kings yeah. out there i love them but you can't, <laughs> we love but you can't get mad when an idea that you created is mm-hmm. come back at you, baby girl. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> you hear something, say something. You yeah. know, if some guy is like talking about heights. Let's let's start that uh-huh. conversation. I've heard incessant things about guys like, yeah, I just prefer like big boobs or like big butts, or she can't have stretch marks or whatever. Okay, I want a man that's six foot, and I'm five seven. Oh my god! <laughs> no! You mis- How dare thy? You misandrist! <laughs> no other quality. Uh, and then also, you know, the. the I want a guy who's smart, funny, can make me laugh. I want a girl <laughs> who looks like Amelia Clark. <laughs> it's just, you know, mm. like, silly little. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Bro, my sister and her friend were having this conversation. She's she's tall too, and she was just listing all the qualities. She's like, "Oh, I like them. Like, I like light hair colors. I like you know very extroverted. I like them tall. The one thing that they focused on was tall. Not not anything else. <laughs> just oh, how dare you? And she's five ten. She's a big girl. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you want from yeah. her? So mm-hmm. you know, it's weird. Yeah, not talking about her. Five two queens with a six yeah. seven man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you do you hope yeah, you do you wide eye. <laughs> <wide-eyed. laughs> like, hmm. <laughs> that's what you like. That's what you like. I mean, yeah. I don't care. Get it. Man. Yeah, I, I don't honestly, care. I don't care. Yeah. 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 Make me laugh. You decent. We're good to go. I don't yeah. care about the world. I feel like that's mm-hmm. kind of. Is that not the conclusion? I think that we've come to is just mm-hmm. like be. Aware. human that mm-hmm. cares about other humans genuinely I, how hard how genuinely. hard is it genuinely and you're not gonna mm-hmm. get it right every time that doesn't mean that you're never gonna say something offensive or something right. that hurts someone else that's mm-hmm. part of being human like you're gonna mess up exactly. but care enough to listen to the people who are trying to give you advice on how you can be a little bit better mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and please for god's sake don't do it because you like a girl Please don't Please. try to be a feminist because you like a girl. That is the, that is, if not worse, <laughs> then people are just mm-hmm. straight up. Because, mis- you know, racism, it's bad. But I will prefer a outright racist <laughs> right? than, you know, like you people trying to be like, you know, just hiding Both? behind right. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, if, don't wear a pearl necklace just because you want to be seen as the female gaze. Like, we can it tell. Is, we, we can, can tell, tell, you know? Yeah. I can see right through that. Right. Absolutely. Right through that. Or don't say you read, um, what, like, Sylvia Plath because <laughs> you're down with us or something. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm with the girls. I'm with the girls. <laughs> yeah. You're not one of the girls. <laughs> there are these it's sarcastic okay. videos on TikTok. Um, where where the guy is just like like um, he's shirtless right and he's reading a romance <laughs> novel. And I'm, like, what are you doing? I'm like, please be please be satire. And I mm-hmm. look at the comments and they're all of women being like, oh my gosh, I want him. I'm like, girl, <laughs> shut up. When he can read, <laughs> that's <laughs> the bar <laughs> is literacy. So Thing low. The bar is in hell. The oh bar is in literacy. Some of these things is like if you were a decent person, like if you've 
if you don't say the N word, <laughs> oh my, <laughs> you would be surprised. You would be you very started. Very surprised. Oh, no. Absolutely. Like, Bro, put hair you have behind to put here. this in perspective. Mm-hmm. Homeboy put up a tripod, put his phone there, did a timer, <laughs> opened the book to whatever page he was quote unquote reading, mm-hmm. and then and then acted like he didn't see the phone. Like, oh hey, I'm just reading this about things. Yeah, yeah. And what's bad is like he watched that before he posted. Uh-huh. It. Like uh-huh. he, he, he put the it, tags. And hashtag <laughs> hashtag Super comment. Bowl 2023. <laughs> hashtag female gay. Hashtag Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. It's like, bro, do you not realize that he did all of this for some TikTok follows and likes and shares? So corny. Mm-hmm. It's like, this is all Horrible. for a show, and that's, that's <laughs> all I am? Thank no, you. The worst perpetrators of <laughs> the men who do pottery. Oh, my God. I'm not going to lie, though. They get me every... Oh, I'm, oh, I'm oh, the oh, entire video. <laughs> Listen, I know it's for show. The entire video. Hey, I mean, you, you, you ate with that. I'm not oh gonna lie. Oh my god. No, because I'm like, oh no, no, like it's just a really cute face. Mm-hmm. It's a really cute face. Yeah, really. <laughs> god, that, that slab of that butter. ceramic. Hey. <laughs> it just, oh my god, the food videos. It's so weird when the they're, food? Co- the, the when cooking? they're cooking. Oh, and if I'm they're like, doing anything domestic, basically. <laughs> It's Reading, cooking, pottery. And he can take care of himself. <laughs> wow. He can do his own laundry. Girl. Oh, my God. Oh, You're my a God. human adult. Wow. But literally, like, just <laughs> hygiene in general. Like, the men who don't want to, like, wash their butts because it's gay. <laughs> oh, my God. What? Get between those cheeks right no, now. No, just clean I'm it. I'm so glad that they accept, like, the, uh, the street interviews. Like, thank you. Mm-hmm. This is on the internet, and whoever whoever wants to date you, they know. You're it's a menace. insane. Like, why don't you... Why don't you just, like, wash your body? Like, <laughs> baby girl, okay. grab a loofah. Get a washcloth. Set that baby up. I promise it's free. It's no one, your body. No one is in the bathroom with you. Mm-hmm. No one. No one. You don't have to tell anyone. If right. It, if it, it's between us. It <laughs> keeps him up at night. Like, guys, I touched my butt. <laughs> I touched my butt in the shower <laughs> trying to wash it. <laughs> it's okay. I promise you it's okay. But I'm not gay. No. I swear. I swear, guys. Ain't nobody. No one was thinking that homeboy. <laughs> you were. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be making that look at them like, okay, John. Oh, okay. okay. I think. Fast forward uh-huh. a couple of years. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But, yeah. Uh, femininity has been widely debated, and I hope we get to a point in society but that where women can be accepted to embrace it and men can be you know, able to embrace it too, and you know, all gender identities can embrace it without being seen as weak or frail, but just as strong people in general. Mm-hmm. But um, thank you for got joining today, joining us today <laughs> on this episode. <laughs> and I forgot to shout out, but thank you, Rabia, um, for giving us this podcast and this platform. And we love you so much. Thank you, thank you, Rabia. We love and miss you all the time. All the time, and we're going to get you back for an episode, Uh we promise. promise. But, um, yeah, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you sometime. I'm not (laughs) sure. At some point. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.